and the Number 14. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. 
The light of eventide now shines the darkness to dispel The glories of fair Zion state ten thousand voices tell For out of Babel God doth call the Saturn saints in one Together all one church compose the body of his Son O church of God, the day of Jubilee Has dawned so bright and glorious for thee Rejoice, be glad Thy shepherd has begun His long divided flock Again to gather into one The Bible is a rule of faith And Christ alone is Lord All we are equal in His sight When we obey His word No earthly master do we know To man who will not bow But to each other and to God Eternal trueness vow of God, the day of Jubilee has dawned so bright and glorious for thee. Rejoice, be glad, thy shepherd has begun his long divided flock again to gather into the day of sex and creeds for us forevermore is past. Our brotherhood are all the saints upon the world so vast. We reach our hands in fellowship to every blood-washed one, while love entwines a loud heart in which God's will is done. O church of God, the day of jubilee has dawned so bright and glorious for thee. Rejoice, be glad, thy shepherd has begun his long divided flock again to gather into one. Oh, bless the truth that broke our bands in it, we now rejoice. While in the holy church of God we hear our Savior's voice, and gladly to his blessed will submissive we shall be. And from the yokes of Babel's lords, from henceforth we are free. Oh, church of God, the day of jubilee has dawned so bright and glorious for Thee. Rejoice, be glad, thy shepherd has begun divided flock again to gather into one. O church of God, the day of jubilee has dawned so bright and glorious for thee. Rejoice, be glad, thy shepherd has begun his long divided flock again to gather into one. Yes. Amen. Yes. Number ninety-seven. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Salvation's free, glad joy to all of Adam's fallen race. We'll tell to all, both far and near, of saving, keeping grace. There's joy, glad joy, now flowing from above. There's joy, glad joy, in the fullness of His love. From wells of everlasting joy, our strength by faith we bring. The joy that thrills my ransomed soul can make the dumb heart sing. There's joy, glad joy, now flowing from above. There's joy, glad joy, in the fullness of His love. How sweet the soul that's purged as pure as gold without alloy. How peaceful is the flowing stream of deep eternal joy. And there's joy, glad joy, now flowing from above. And there's joy, glad joy. 
in the fullness of his love. I'll live for Christ through this dark world, and faithful I will be. The joy that keeps my soul shall last eternally. There's joy, glad joy, now flowing from above. There's joy, glad joy, in the fullness of His love. Salvation's free, glad joy to all of Adam's fallen race. We'll tell to all, both far and near, of saving grace. There's joy, glad joy, now flowing from above. There's joy, glad joy, in the fullness of His love. to thank the Lord that I know what I'm singing about. I thank the Lord. This is what I possess. This is real. This is not a fake story. I'm so glad for um, the salvation in my soul, for the wells of everlasting joy. And I'm not about to give up. I have chosen the Lord and I'm determined to go on. Amen. 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 129. Amen. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me, he died on Calvary. Great and grace was free, and pardon there was multiplied to me, and there my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, mercy, there was great and grace was free, and pardon there was multiplied to me, and there my burden so found liberty at Calvary. By God's word, at last my sin I learned. Then I trembled at the law I'd spurred. Till my guilty soul imploring turned to Calvary. Mercy, there was great and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. And there my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Now I've given to Jesus everything. Now I'd gladly own him as my king. Now my raptured soul can only sing of Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. There my burden so found liberty at Calvary. Oh, the love that drew salvation's land. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty gulf that God did span at Calvary. Oh, mercy, there was great and grace was free. Pardon, there was multiplied to me. And there my burden so found liberty at Calvary. One eight zero. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> to this world I'm crucified, all its follies I've denied. Christ is mine evermore to be. In my heart he has a place, there he rings my wondrous grace, for he lives, yes, he lives in me. Jesus lives in me, yes, he lives in me. He 
is the star of perfect day, drives the darkness all away. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. To this world I'm crucified, all his faults I've denied. Christ is mine evermore to be. In my heart he has a bliss, and he rings my wondrous grace. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Yes, he lives in me. He's the star of perfect day, drives the darkness all away. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Christ is now my all in all, and he hears me when I call. Faith is your face I see. I will live for him each day. He will guide me in the way. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Yes, he lives in me. He's the star of perfect day, drives the darkness all away. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. With his blood he purchased me when he died upon the tree. Then my body is temple be. There is fear doth abide and my soul satisfied. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Yes, he lives in me. He's the star of perfect day, drives the darkness all away. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Sing, Jesus lives in me. Yes, he lives in me. He's the star of perfect day, drives the darkness all away. For he lives, yes, he lives in me. Oh, yes. 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 Oh, yes. Amen, amen. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, oh, brethren, this experience of Calvary ought never, ever to grow old. Oh, I'm glad Calvary still makes hell tremble, and it still makes the enemy shake, and it still brings hope to the sinner, and it still touches us in a special way as saints. Thank God for that fountain that flowed. 
Oh, and I think, saints, as we are gathering under God's open heaven this morning, we ought also to have special thanksgiving of how God brought us through some intense battles not so very long ago. Oh, saints, we've come through some things. We didn't come under. We came through some things by God's great power. We didn't know how far the battle would go. We didn't know how long we'd be under those harassing circumstances. We didn't know how hot the conflict is and would be. But oh, one thing we knew, we needed to gather. We knew we needed to come get our souls encouraged. We knew we needed to hug and kiss one another. We needed that human interaction. And Zoom wouldn't do. And so we knew we had a pastor after God's own heart. Apostle Hildebrandt knew he needed to obey God rather than man. And oh, we knew we had an op almighty God who would bring us through. And he did. And he did. God is sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And he rules this world. And he showed us that his truth would prevail. And it did, as it always will. You cannot do anything against the truth. And I feel we should have special thanksgiving and fill God's atmosphere with shouts and praises to God for what he's done for us and how he's going to continue to bring us through no matter what comes. Oh, saints, let's go to prayer. Let's praise God for his wonderful works to the children of men. His goodness is amazing. We thank God for another healthy newborn baby Amen. added to the church. God's doing one miracle after another. All has worked out for good. Even what we've come through has worked out for good. He's been able to add souls to the church. We've been able to meet one another, and it's just glorious. Let's go to prayer and thank God and beseech him to just be with us. His holy presence is what we need most. Right. Inspire the preacher, yes. pour out his spirit. Amen. Amen. And I pray, God, open heaven. And I pray, God, use your messenger in a special way. Oh, we thank you so much for the words of life, for the wonderful uh, salvation and, and what you have brought us. Yes, now Lord. we pray, God, bless this service. Bless the baptismal service after this. And, oh, God, bless those that are going to be baptized, I pray. Lord, thank you for newness of life. Thank you that we never have to go back to that old life again. Thank you, God, that you have set us free from the clutches of sin. Oh, thank you for grace and glory in our souls. Yes, Lord. Now, God, we beseech you, come and be with us Please. in a special way. Yes, in Jesus' name, we ask these favors. Amen. Yeah.
We're excited to be here this morning. We're going to have a good time up here, right? Amen. 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 Written down, written down in the Lamb's book of life. My name is written down, written down, written down with the precious blood of Christ. My name is written down, written down, written down in the Lamb's book of life. My name is written down, written down, written down with the precious blood of Christ. My name is written down. Lord, I care not for riches, neither silver or gold. I would make sure of heaven. I would enter the fold in the book of the kingdom with its pages so fair by the cross of my dear Savior. My name is written there, written down, written down in the Lamb's book of life. My name is written down, written down, written down with the precious blood of Christ. My name is written down. Only faintly now I see him with a darkened veil between. But a blessed day is coming when his glory shall be seen. Face to face, a blissful moment. Face to face, to see and hold. Face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loves me so. Written down, written down, when the Lamb's book of life. My name is written down, written down, written down, with the precious blood of Christ. My name is written down. Jesus got a hold of my life. And he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart. He got into my soul. I used to be all so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Sing, Jesus got a hold of my life. And he won't let me go. Jesus got a hold of my life. And he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart. He got into my soul. I used to be all so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Sing, Jesus got a hold of my life. And he won't let me go. Sometimes I remember how I used to be living in sin. I tried to act happy and free, but I wasn't within. I fooled a lot of friends of mine. They thought I had some peace of mind, but I never had a thing until I opened up and let Jesus in. Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart, he got into my soul. I used to be all oh so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Sing, Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Aren't you getting just a bit tired of fooling around? You try to laugh your way through life, but you're not gaining ground. Why not turn to God today? Ask Him in your heart to stay. You'll find my Jesus love to be the greatest thing that you ever found. 
Jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go. Jesus got into my heart, he got into my soul. I used to be all so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Sing, Jesus got a hold of my life and he won't let me go. I used to be all so sad, but now I'm free and glad. Sing, Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. Jesus got a hold of my life, and he won't let me go. be seated. This working all right? Yes, I can tell it's working. Wonderful. Like I said, it's a bit of a distraction to be outside, but I think we will have a wonderful time together. Today is a very special day for us, and maybe I should start with what happened at 524 this morning. While I was fast asleep at 524 this morning, Brittany and Hildebrand decided to join our family. <laughs> Needless to say that I didn't mind. I am a very happy grandpa this morning, one more time confirmed. So I am thankful beyond everything else. I am so glad because every time a birth happens, it could be so different no matter what, because we are human, a human being is, we are very fragile people. And I just praise God for it, for his help, his assistance. We are so thankful for that. So this morning is a very special day here for us. We will be having baptism right after this service. And I have felt for some time and felt throughout this week that we need to deal uh, with that in detail this morning I want to show you by the scripture and I know for the Bible students here this morning it'll be it'll be well-known things but it will not hurt you because first of all we have children growing up they need to understand what does the Bible teach secondly there's a lot a lot of confusion in the world about baptism so by the grace of God we're gonna clear up a lot of that for you this morning by the Word of God but before I do that, I just quickly wanted to mention something. This week, this coming week, is a very crucial week for our country. And I am very, very moved in my soul about it. Brethren, when I just last night, I listen, uh, I guess sometimes it happens that the enemy does not know, just like in Gideon's situation when he was uh, about to, uh, to blow the uh, trumpet, um, then all of a sudden word came back to him from the Midian, Midianite camp and that was a, that was very encouraging word and I got very encouraging uh, words last night from inside the enemy's camp them not knowing how that all works so they are trembling horrified the enemy is horrified about what's ahead of us this week so brethren this country our country our beloved country Canada and I, I want to begin by saying how privileged I am to live in Canada, how thankful I was in 1985 when they, they granted me the privilege to immigrate to Canada. I was so proud and still love this country. It's such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful country. And maybe that's why, maybe that's why I am so upset at the enemy that he would destroy such a beautiful, 
beautiful country as this or trying to do that. So brethren, uh, this coming week is extremely, extremely important. Uh, the 20th, which is Wednesday, there will be a lot happening. Brethren, is it okay if I stand here or am I messing up the sound system if I come forward? It's okay? All right. I, for some reason, I don't like to be far away from the people. I like to be close to you so that I can step on your toes and I'm just saying it. But I do need to stay far enough so that the people can get the good news, not the weather. If you know what I mean. The people want the, people want the news, not the weather. Anyway, so uh, brethren, uh, this coming week, I am, I am uh, what should I say? I am very, very alert to what is happening. And I recognize that the enemy is lining up just like during the time of people of Israel. There was two camps. There was the one camp, the people of Israel, and then there was the other camp of the Philistines. So brethren, we are in no less, we are in no less of a battle than they were back then. And actually, actually, uh, bear with me, but I need to say it like this. We are actually facing a mighty Goliath. So some people say, well, the devil is this small and, and he's under our feet. Uh, yes, that's the goal. And, and once he is under our feet, he is pretty small. But I'm saying sometimes as he appears, as we face him, it is a Goliath and he is, uh, uh, humanly speaking, size-wise, is that a way to say it? He is actually far superior to us as far as that's concerned, even in number in a way. But brethren, none of that alarms me and none of that scares me because I know, I know of a God that is, that has stood with the people of Israel and brethren, more than ever in my life before, I realize what it means to stand on the truth. And brethren, we have nothing to lose. And I consider myself only a boy named David. I consider myself, I, I truly consider myself very small and very unarmed, if you will, uh, to face what we are facing. But in another sense, brethren, I am very bold and, and, and two years of this battle, three years now, over three years of this battle, has not weakened my resolve, has not weakened me. No fines, no tickets, no amounts of money. Brethren, there's nothing that they can do to quiet God down. God is on our side and we are, we are in the battle for truth. And brethren, in that sense, I feel like Caleb when he was 85 years old. I feel like this to this morning. I feel like looking at, at it and I'm saying, give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. And I cannot keep myself at home. Lord willing, come September 20th. Lord willing, I want to be in Ottawa. I want to be where it's happening. Brethren, I want to be. And I wish a million people would rise up. And if they do, thank God. If they don't, brethren, then we will do like Gideon. Then we'll take the 300 and divide the 300 into three groups. Doesn't mean there's division among us. Just means we're just lining up for the battle. And then, brethren, when we hear, when we hear the battle, we'll blow, blow the trumpet and we'll break those, whatever th th that was called. And, brethren, the enemy of 185,000 Philistines we're so uh, confused, didn't know what to do. We're destroying one another. And brethren, actually the enemy that's coming against us right now is, is nervous about this. Because one child of God that is standing on the word of God can go against 10,000. Brethren, not on our own, but in the strength of the Lord on the truth. We underestimate what the truth means, brethren. We're standing on the, on the written word of God. We're standing on the, on, the, on the word of God that has proven itself time and time and time and time again. And I feel like David, I'll, I'll, I'll get to baptism here momentarily. I feel like David, I feel like David when he stood there and he faced it. I feel like David this morning, I, can, I feel like a horse that is pawing in the, in the, in the stall. I, 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 I feel like, Lord, bring Wednesday on and brethren I have no idea what to expect I have no idea what to expect one of these days brethren one of these days it could cost us somebody it could cost us our life but brethren if my faith is not worth dying for my faith is not worth living for 
So brethren, I feel like, I feel like David when I hear it, when I hear what's happening in our school. And brethren, thank God we have our own private school here. Thank God we have a Christian school. But brethren, my heart is bleeding for the children out there. My heart is bleeding for others. Brother, it's not just about me. It's not just about our children. Not just about our church uh, gathering here this morning. Brethren, it is about this world and their suffering under this oppression. Brethren, they are, our children are attacked like never before. And brethren, I feel like David. I hear this and I see people afraid. And this morning I say this uh, with uh, much respect. I'm wondering where is the, where are the Christians? I'm saying where is Christianity in a time like this? I'm asking where is everybody? I'm asking like David said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? And while they're trying to distract him and telling them, telling him, who are you? Who do you think you are? Haven't we heard that before? Who do you think you are? Brethren, it's not that we think who we are. It is just I'm hearing the Philistine speaking. I'm hearing him blaspheming God. I'm hearing them saying things that are awful, things that 10 years ago we would have never thought we would hear. Brethren, what is going on in this world? But brethren, we're living in the best of times. I said like not long ago on these grounds right here, Jesus saved the best wine for last. And brethren, we are here in this time. We were born for a time such as this. And brethren, if I say like Esther, wasn't Esther, wasn't her that said, Esther said, if, if, I, if I die, I, if I perish, I perish. Brethren, I'm not going into it lightly. We're not going into it lightly. But brethren, if I perish, I perish. But brethren, I'll stand up for the truth. I'll stand up for the word of God. We will do that. We will do that together. Brethren, we are 10,000 strong. We're 100,000 strong. Not in ourselves, but by the grace of God. And brethren, this country is at the brink, at the brink of destruction. The enemy has it set. And now the enemy is no longer even moving slow because he knows, he knows. Now, and I heard last night, they said, oh my. And they call it, this is the hate group. This is the hate group. And brethren, how opposite isn't it? Brethren, we are filled with the love of God. And there's not, a, there's not an ounce of hate in me whatsoever except towards the devil. Except, and if somebody walks in, in, the fa in my face and says, I'm the devil, well, yes, then I hate that. Because what I mean is I love the soul. But brethren, we hate what the devil is doing in this time. And brethren, this is our time. How can we sit on our hands? How can we cow down when we see what? What is happening brethren and what affects what affects uh, uh, one of us affects all of us indirectly brethren Martin Luther King said that brethren this is what is happening right now and by God's grace brethren we will st stand strong and we must pray brethren this coming week pray pray every time if you can't go somewhere you can't be standing somewhere don't worry about it but pray for those that can pray for those that have a voice and it's not just me there's many out there and brethren this morning I'll say one more thought the thing before we go into our study this morning brethren I'll say something that might shock you let's pray for our Muslim brethren yes. Amen. brethren obviously obviously there is honest souls among the Muslims Honestly, well, brother, you don't know what they're what the Quran says. You don't know, brethren. At this point, let me just tell you something. I will join the Muslim brother that says, I stand for the family unit, I stand that our children will not be destroyed. I will stand with my Muslim brother in that sense, and I'll say, Here, I'll stand shoulder to shoulder with you. Well, Pastor, what are you doing? What are you doing to Christianity? I'm doing nothing to Christianity. But what I'm doing to Christianity is saying, let's stop being false Christianity. Let's stop being Christianity that is asleep. And let's stand up. And that's why, that's why we were in Ottawa. That's why we stood. When the Christians were too afraid to stand. And when the truckers arrived. And when the truckers came and they said, Pastor, can you pray? Brethren, when 15 of us young truckers were, we were standing in a circle. And we were praying. Brethren, I thought, look. It's, 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 it's like, it's like uh, when, when Jesus came. If the Jews don't want it, we'll go to the heathen. And, and brethren, I'm saying, I'm not classifying this, this is heathen. That's, I'm saying, brethren, let's go to the people that want it. And right now, brethren, right now, the Muslims are standing up and saying, enough is enough. We do not give up our family values like that. And I'm asking so-called Christianity. I'm asking Protestantism. Where are you? Where are you? 
Where are you? How about we stand together? How about, and no wonder, no wonder the enemy is attacking because he looked at it and he said, he went around and he said, I think I've got them all asleep. I think they're all sleeping. I think we should have no problem. I think we can close all the churches. And thank God some of us woke up and said, is there not a cause? Is there? And brethren, I'm distracted when people want to tell me, who do you think you are? I can't really listen to what they're saying because I hear the blasphemous word of the Philistine. And brethren, we must fight and this is our time. And obviously when I say fight, by now you know what I'm talking about. Listen, I've never made my fist bloody. I don't fight with my fist, but I fight with the word of God. I fight with the truth. I stand for the truth. And brethren, we must do it. This is our time. God help us. That was message number one. Now number two comes. Like I said, brother, no offense to you that set this up, but that's too far away. So I got my scriptures right here on my paper. So we'll just work off of this and we'll let you know. So this morning we are planning, and I don't think this will take us long, but I must go through this. We must understand what are we talking about, about baptism. So put your hand on your Bible. And next step will be raise up your Bible. I want to see how many Bibles do we have present here this morning. All right. Very good. Very good. You can put your Bibles down. So unless we can base what we're doing on the Bible, we have no foundation. We have now no foundation. We must stand on the word of God. So what does baptizing mean? What does the word in Spanish? I speak different languages in Spanish. We say bautizar. In low German, we say deuten. Nicht flaten. Deuten. Okay, so I'm saying, what does the word bautizar mean? Baptize. It means dip. It means put under. Is there, is there an English word dunking? Immerse. It just means put under. So, brethren, as you well know, you know me by now. Some of you here, you are here for the first time. Special visitors on this here on the right hand side. Welcome here for the first time. Our online audience, I, I, I'm so sorry we started so late, but I think you patiently waited till we finally got started here. So um, where was I? Help me out. Okay, so um, you know me by now. You know me by now. I do not know. I'm sorry. That's one thing I don't know how to do. I don't know how to talk around the bush. I don't know how to flower something up. I don't know how to put icing on the cake. I don't know how to do it. I just like to bring you the cake and say, here it is. So what I'm saying is baptism isn't what many people say it is. It isn't. So in order for you to baptize, according to the Bible, you have to have enough water to dunk somebody. You can. So, but pastor, I heard say, people said, and I've heard that the same thing. They said, but pastor, it, it's not so much the, the method, how you do it. It, as long as you get baptized. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The problem with baptism is that it is an outward symbol of an inward reality. Okay? So there's only one way, and we could use plenty of examples, but I don't have the time. There's only one way what baptism is supposed to show is that I have died to sin and risen up to new life. So what we're actually going to, that's why we have to get that little uh, pool that we bought. We could do it at the lake. Today we decided to do it here either way. Uh, but we do have to have enough water where we can dip somebody under. Because otherwise, if I take a little bit of water, is this yours? I won't charge you for it. So if, if I take this water, if I, uh, if I take this water and I say I'll baptize somebody, I, I won't pour it on you, okay? So, but if I say I baptize you and I pour this water on somebody, I'm sorry, folks. That's not baptism. That's not bautizar. That's nicht deuten. You say, well, it, it, we meant the same thing. No, no, no. You can't do it because it's a symbol. If I do this or if I do this, that, that's not. If I sprinkle someone, that's not baptizing because baptism is supposed to mean we bury somebody 
somebody is dead, it doesn't, they're not dying during baptism. I've never drowned anybody while I baptized them. But I'm saying it symbolizes that I have dead, died to sin. And it's like, it's like you'll, you'll witness a resurrection one after another. Not that they are physically dead, but it's a symbol of an inward reality. So it can only be done. It can only be done by uh, the right way of baptizing. You can't bury a person with one shovel of dirt. You can't bury a person by taking one handful of dirt and sprinkle it on the casket. We have to bury them. Okay? So I will make sure. I'll be the one baptizing, Lord willing. I'll make sure I get you under. If you resist that, don't worry. I've got the power over you. So when I, I will dunk you. If you, you go like this, I'll go and come up. I actually enjoy it. Sometimes it's just their natural reaction is, oh, I'm going in the water. I don't mind it at all because I always bring him out. But we've got to do it right. Get you under and then back up. All right. So baptism can only be done by immersion. To, is that the way to say it? Immersion. Yes. To do it the right way. Otherwise, the symbolism is lost. Right. Symbolism is lost. One day, hopefully not long from now, we want to have the Lord or, Lord's ordinance. Same thing with that. Same thing with that. People say, oh, no, 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 no. Jesus didn't mean that we were supposed to wash each other's feet. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Because, well, I'll just buy some groceries for a widow. And that, no, 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 no. Buying groceries for a widow is a lot easier than taking your shoes off and your socks and sit in front of your brother and say, here, okay, wash my feet. Because you and I need each other so much. We need each other's feet washed by one another. That's what the symbolism of it was. And that's why Jesus took his, the apron and he did. And P Peter said, oh, no, 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 no. You'll never wash my feet. Jesus said, no problem. No problem. But you'll have no part with me. Oh, he said in that case, wash my face too. No, no, Jesus said, I got it under control. We'll wash your feet, and that's it. So, brethren, we can't, these ordinances, we can't play around with them and say, we'll do it like this. And I understand, I understand. So they said, well, somebody was in prison or something happened, and they couldn't get them, so that's why they poured water on them. Well, bless their heart. We can't call, that's not the symbolism of baptism. And we have no issues if we have enough water. By the way, I don't know if I'll have enough time to get into all of that, but we need to, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get a little more of that a little later on. So Mark, six, sec, Mark 16, verse 16. If you have notes, if you have your notebook here and a pen, it would be good for you young people to write down every uh, scripture I mentioned this morning and some thoughts because you'll need it to explain what is baptism all about, okay? Mark 16, verse 16 See, humanity is always tempted to go either to the right side or go to the left side, okay? Some people put tremendous amount of uh, emphasis on baptism, so much so, and ask me how I know. I came from a group of people called Mennonites, and the Mennonites put tremendous weight on baptizing. Mind you, the majority of them, don't dunk. Just pour some water on their head. But none of them is allowed to get married unless they are baptized or poured water on them. And I got news for you folks. The majority of them, how do I know? Because they told me so. The majority of them never experienced true salvation. But because, I mean, which young man, if he knows, okay, I'm supposed to be have some water poured on my head, then I can get married? Okay. One or one or two bottles, whatever you need, pour it on my head. Okay, I'm ready. Bride, come over here. Let's get married. So that's a false thing. They do that every year. My folks, my cousins, my second cousins, my third cousins, they're stuck in it. They do it every year. Every year comes, what month is it? Comes uh, Easter, then 50 days, I think, from Easter, whatever that is. Pentecost, then all right, everybody lines up. All the young people line up. Okay, then the ministry goes along there and he pours water on everyone. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And missing the whole thing. They, they were sinners before and they were sinners afterwards. Nothing has changed. Symbolism wrong, but at least now they can get married. That's false. That's false. There is nothing in the whole Bible, folks. There's nothing in the whole Bible that connects baptism with marriage. Nothing. Nothing. What does the Bible say in Mark 16, verse 16? It says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So there's something wrong when people are saved and don't want to get baptized. 
So I can only conclude, if you are saved this morning, but you don't want to get baptized. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll just say there might be some exceptions because we are dealing with it. I'm, I'm, I'm personally dealing with situations where there's a severe battle going on between spouses where one of them just got saved and the other one isn't saved yet. And they were, they did pour water on them when they got married. And they think, also my background people, they think that if you get baptized the second time, that's the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. That if you do that the second time, we've had situations where a mother showed up here before we baptized her son. And because her son had been, they had poured water on him before, uh, and the mo mother showed up here and she was, she went hysteric. She's just, my, my, my God, my God, my son will now be blaspheming the Holy Ghost. That's wrong as well because we have instances in the Bible where somebody was baptized the second time. And guess what happened? The Holy Ghost came on them. So it's not blaspheming the Holy Ghost because what happens is baptism, too much weight is put on baptism. And then the other group doesn't put enough weight on it. Now, we have been here a long time. Some of us have been here like 20, 30 years. We are actually in danger, presently in danger, of not putting enough weight on the baptism. Well, I got saved. Thank God, saints. I'm so glad. Lord, save my soul. Okay. Actually, biblically speaking, when somebody gets saved, that day, that night, we should be looking, where is the pool? Where is the lake? Where is the water? Because... New Testament teaching tells us, according to Mark 16, uh, 16, tells us that he that is believes and is baptized shall be saved. They go together. They go together. If you're saved and you live saved, you need to be baptized. But the right way. Because you're supposed to show outwardly what has just happened to me. I just died to sin. It doesn't happen in the water. That water, that water won't save anyone. And we'll show you the scripture. All right, so uh, 1 Peter 3, if you can write that down, it's your next one. 1 Peter 3, verse 21. This is not a regular uh, preaching service this morning. It's more of a study. So 1 Peter 3, 21. Can, can someone, you have it there? Let, let me just see. So it talks about baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of of Jesus Christ the water in that pool where I'm going to be baptizing you shortly that water does not wash away sin it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter who says what biblically we have enough proof it does and it's actually makes a lot of sense how would that water now if that water washes away sins I'm going to go around grabbing people and dunking them Honestly, like if that, no, I'll, nobody will drown, but uh, listen, I'll run, I'll run around with the pool and I'll dunk people and then the sins are washed away. Can you imagine? I mean, I'll be dunking a thousand a day if that washed away. That's why John the Baptist, that's why John the Baptist, when he saw people coming to the baptism, he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, no, 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 you're not ready. And this morning, if somebody walks up to me and says, look, I'm, I, I'm a sinner. I live in sin. But hey, I like the idea. Hey, I like the idea of getting baptized. Uh, no, thank you. Go get repentance. Go get a hold of a change of heart. And then once you have new life, come and I'll baptize you. But not before. because That's why John said, now, if John had thought that the water, does that make sense? If John had thought that the water does save somebody, well, why tell I mean, let's get those Pharisees dunked. Yeah. They needed it bad. You know what I mean? So that they could be changed. But John knew the water doesn't do it. It doesn't take the, the, the filth away. But it's a good, it's, 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 a con, it's a good, how does it say? It's a good conscience. And those that will be baptized this morning are going to show all of us that will be looking on. They'll be telling us, I want to show you what happened to me. I used to live in sin and loved this sin and wanted to continue living in sin. And then the day came and I stopped. God stopped me in my tracks and he changed my life. And this is what happened. I am now dead to sin, risen up to new life. Right? You say, Pastor, I think you said that before. There's three or four more times coming where I'm saying it. So get ready for it. Okay. 
So let's go to an instance in the Bible, very interesting instance because it tells us a lot about baptism. Acts chapter 8 verse 35. Acts chapter 8 verse 35. Is, brother, is, is, uh, are any of these mics, they're not cordless, but I was just, oh yeah, there are some here. Would we, would the red one work? Yeah, okay, very good. So let me see. Brother Isaac, you want to help me read? Okay. So Acts chapter 8 verse 35, we have a very, very in interesting account here of what happened to somebody. Okay, verse 8, verse 35, read. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. All right, so the uh, situation here was there's a man traveling. There's a man traveling far away. He's traveling from, he had come from Jerusalem. He had worshipped in Jerusalem, I believe. And he was traveling through the desert, going a long, long ways, a long ways through the desert. It's, I, I would just like for you to understand one thing as we go. When you travel through the de desert, what's one of the main things you have on the wagon? Water. You have water on the wagon, right? Keep, just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So we have this man traveling through the desert. He's got water on the wagon because he's going through the desert. That you can't do without water. Okay, very good. So Philip, God has sent Philip and said, look, there's somebody there. Go. And uh, God sent him to speak to this man. And Philip runs beside the wagon. There's so much in this, in this, uh, this one of my favorite accounts in the Bible, just how this unfolded. So Philip comes and he, he's speaking to the, to the eunuch. What's he say? And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain, unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, <laughs> see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? Okay, so, brother, you may be seated for now. So Philip is preaching to him, and they're talking about what, what uh, the man is asking. So what did Isaiah mean? Who's he talking about? Philip is preaching to him, right? And this man, this, this eunuch, he actually, either it was confirmed or he got saved while Philip is preaching to him. But this man was not continuing on in his sin this man was putting himself on God's side whether that happened before or it was happening right here but this this man said as Philip is speaking to him there the horses or camels whatever they had the, the chariot is moving on right so why is this man all of a sudden he sees water and he tells Philip he says look there's water why would I not get baptized so it shows you us a number of things. It shows us a number of things. Obviously, this man knew I need to be dunked. This man knew that in this pail of water that we have along this drinking water, I don't fit into that pail. I, I don't fit into this bottle. If you and I fit into this bottle, we could be baptized in this bottle. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm just trying to make the point clear. We have to have enough water where we can do this symbolism yes. okay we have to have water where we can put you under and show this is what it is talking about so philip must have at some point spoken to him about it it goes on that all the time of the day right and they're traveling and this man says look there's water wouldn't it be good if i would be baptized interesting point here if you would take the niv bible uh, certain verses that are here in our Bibles, in the King James Bible, are not in the INIV. Yeah. They're no longer there. They're no longer there. So if you, brother, uh, yes, I believe, I won't confirm it for sure because I don't have the INIV right here and I don't want to make a mistake, but I believe the following words are not in there. Verse 37, read verse 37, 8 verse 37. Philip said, And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. In that time, for someone to say, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That was a strong statement. Yes. Strong statement. This man, this eunuch, is uh, knowingly putting himself on God's side. Now, I want to I wanna simplify it this morning, but not, what do you call it? I don't want to make it last. I don't, there's another word. I don't want to make diminish the value or diminish the sincerity of it but i want to simplify it enough because there's so much confusion in the land okay so brethren there are two sides there are two sides in this world there is the evil side 
and there is the good side. So if you are putting yourself on the right side and saying, I will serve God. I don't want to do evil. Lord, forgive me of the evil. You're putting yourself on the right side. You're saying, Jesus is the Son of God. Brethren, then you need to be baptized. You need to show that publicly. You see, it's one thing. Some people would like to be Nicodemuses all their life long. Always talk to Jesus during the night. Pastor Henry, I'm totally with you. Can I record that and play it on CBC tomorrow? Can I take a picture of you and show that in London Free Press front page tomorrow? You are totally with me. Um, um, not right now because I'm dealing with things. Brethren, I believe sometimes people are dealing with things. But there comes a time when I need to step into that pool and let everybody know, guess what? I am done with the bad life. I am done with cheating. I am done with cutting corners. I am putting myself on God's side. And I want to live for God. Obviously, we understand. Obviously, obviously, we're human beings. And we'll make mistakes. And we'll, uh, after you're baptized, it'll still happen. Where all of a sudden, the priest stops you and you get a ticket. You drove 10 kilometers too fast. Well, if I had been a Christian, that would not. No, 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 no. Brethren, those things will happen, and sometimes you'll speak to your spouse, and it was just not as nice as it should have been, right? Unless I'm the only one. <laughs> sometimes I just say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, 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 I think we had a little misunderstanding. That happens after you're baptized, just so you know. Be encouraged. But brethren, after we're, when we make that declaration today and saying, I am going to step into that pool, what you're saying is, I'm turning my back on sin, I'm turning my back on the devil, and I want to follow God, and I will do my best. I will pray, I will read, I will sing, I will shout, I'll do whatever. I want to be a child of God. Yes. Am I giving you the weather? I need to step back. So, so is it there? Okay, so let me see. Just right there, uh, prophet talking about himself. Uh, then Philip began with, okay, go on, go on a little further. Okay, a little further. Keep on going. Okay, okay here we go. Then, okay, go back. Uh, the, the man says, look, I'm reading the NIV. Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. The verse is not in there. The verse about the most important verse is not in there. Well, you say, well, maybe, they, maybe they, they studied and maybe they didn't find it in the original. Whatever the case was, I'll tell you, it's original. Get saved first and then step in the water. Yeah. Right. Just because somebody wants to be baptized, I can't baptize them. Because I've got orders from above that people need to be saved and baptized. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not mad. I'm just passionate. You know how that goes. Okay, I, I told you that before, so we don't need to repeat that. Okay, brother, so what do we have next? Read, please. Verse, and verse 38. Verse 38. And he commanded that the chariot, and he commanded the chariot to stand still. Okay. And they, no, slow, slow. You, you and me have one problem in common, brother. We talk five miles, five, five miles a minute. So, brother, slow down. Yes. So now read, now read. I love this, brother. We're, 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 anyway, go ahead. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. Okay. And they went. And? And they, they went, went down, down both into, into the water. He's doing good, right? Going both into the water. Both Philip, Philip and, and the, the eunuch. And, and he baptized him. him. <laughs> Don't lose that lesson, brother. <laughs> so, brethren, they both stepped into the water. That's how Jesus got baptized. That's why John was baptizing at the Jordan. He could have, he had enough water in the house, drinking water, to pour it on people's heads. Brethren, it loses the symbolism, right? It loses the symbolism. We've got to have enough water so we can step into the water and baptizing someone. But brethren, I am not, I am not, I am not hateful against somebody that has been pouring water on people. All I want is Brethren, let's get back to the Bible. Let's get back to the Bible. What do you mean? Aren't we in a time right now where there's so much confusion in the land? And brethren, I want to hear, I want to know what does the Bible say? Let's get back to the Bible. 
All right, so they both went into the water. Yeah. They told the servants, stop, the, stop the, the chariot. All right, and then we see. I'm a very dramatic person. I, my, I have a, lot, a very vivid imagination. So the eunuch, I don't know how old he was. I don't know how old Philip was, but they both stepped into the water, yes. right? Yeah. Deep enough where Philip was able to baptize this man. Well, did he have a new set of dry clothes? I'll tell you one thing. That wasn't the eunuch's biggest concern traveling through the desert. Give me a couple of hours and I'm dry. Not a problem. But what, what the eunuch was making sure is, look, if that's what the Bible has for me, yes. there could be people sitting in our midst here right this morning. And the Lord would make it clear to them, look, you are saved. You need to be baptized. I got some good news for you. We're not a church where you have to prove yourself six months, six years, 12 years, one month, whatever it is. The very night, the very day that you get saved, come on over and we'll go for a swim. What I mean is come on over. We'll step into the water and we will put you under to show the people around us. Look, that's what just happened to me. All right, read. Um, verse 39. Yes, please. And when they were come up out of the water, okay. the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. So why does it tell us so clearly stepping into the water and stepping out of the water? Brother, I got news for you. The New Testament knows of no other baptism, no other method of baptism right. but by immersion because that's the symbolism of it. All right, so we've got that. Uh, write down in your notes Acts chapter 9, verse 19. Acts chapter 9, verse 19. What I'm telling you right now is I'm kind of going a little further in our study now is that there is an urgency that that needs to be done soon. Paul or Saul before he was, he was called Saul. Yes. It says in Acts 9, 19, he received sight forthwith. In the, in, the, I'm in the middle of the verse, and arose and was baptized. So Ananias uh, came to the house. Ananias realized, or whoever it was that baptized him realized, before this job is done, we need to do baptism. Yes. We need to do baptism. And that was not uncommon. Now we'll go to another uh, account here, also very interesting, Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 shows us, again, very similar things. But very interesting, Acts chapter 16, verse 30. Here we have a situation where Paul and Silas were put, thrown in jail. All right? And they beat them up. Their backs were lacerated. Is that the word? Their backs were torn badly. And in the middle of the night, there's a mighty earthquake. And the, the doors of the prison are shaken. And the prison doors open up, flung open. And actually the prison uh, stocks of their feet were loosened. They could have all escaped. All right. And the prison keeper, guess what was on his mind? The prison keeper is, what's going to happen now? These people have escaped. Guess what? They'll kill me. Right? Yeah. So what do we find there? Um, just as he's drawing out his sword, he was about to commit suicide. This prison keeper, he knew either I kill myself or I will be killed in the morning. Because look where the prisoners are. Where's, where's where are the prisoners? And Paul screams and says, Sir, do thyself no harm. Don't kill yourself. We're all here. Yes. Well, the man, I'll, I'll tell you what, humanity understands way more than they let on many times. This prison keeper knew right away there's in another power here. There's something special about these people. How come they're still in there? Then at that juncture, it says, verse 30, And brought them out. And said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? All right. Some people don't have the humility to say sirs. All right. There's a whole message we could preach on saying, my title this morning is sirs. Yes. I would not, you, you may be seated. I would not stand before you this morning preaching the word of God, teaching the word of God. If I hadn't had made a crisis experience where I have to first say sirs. Yes. Oh, so that's what Pastor Hildebrandt wants. Yes. Yes, sir. That's what we want. No, brethren, it's not about me at all. But, brethren, this man knew, this prison keeper knew, these people, you know, if somebody has more than you possess, 
If you know somebody has it, just say it. Amen. Sir, sir, I wish I had what you have. Ma'am, I wish God would give me what you have. Yes. Just humble down. And this, this prison keeper knew there's something there. What's he saying? He said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Acts chapter 16, verse 31 and does not oh. say, brethren, Acts 16, 31, when this honest man is asking, so what must I do? This was Paul's opportunity to tell him, get baptized. Brethren, brethren, I see this across this land. The emphasis is on baptizing, baptizing. The emphasis is not on baptizing. It's, that's the second thing. First things first. First apostles. Wait a minute, we're not teaching that this morning. So first getting saved and then getting baptized. Because if you do it the other way, it's, it's um, not valid. It's not valid because baptism, you'll just, you'll just come out of there the same person before you were dry, now you're wet. It's the only difference. You, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Right. But what did he tell them? Read, please. And, and they said? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Read. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in the that and to all that were in his house so this is at midnight we have at midnight we have the earthquake so is this now the next day or are we still talking about midnight it's still dark out it's still yes. night time okay yes. by now we've got everybody awake by now everybody's looking what is going on and they speak they're preaching to him with their backs hurting with their backs bleeding brethren with their backs bleeding and we have a little problem and we have a little uh, ticket from the police mm. and uh, people say well I, I can't go on like this like will will the congregation pay my ticket well i hope not so you can get some faith yeah. anyway no charge for that so he says and they spake unto him the word of the lord and to all that were in his house i have no idea how many were in the house servants children young people i don't know but one thing I know is they told him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And one thing I'm telling you this morning, if you were baptized as a little baby by the Catholic Church, the baptism doesn't count. You're right. Doesn't count. It doesn't count. Pastor, that's millions of people. I understand. But if you were baptized by the Catholic Church, I have no hatred against the Catholic Church. My, there's, there's many of, the bre of my brethren are in the Catholic Church. And they realize now what's happening. They realize what the Pope is doing. And they're coming out of Catholicism. And they realize, what about my baptism? That's why the people were, the whole movement was called the Anabaptist. Anabaptist means they were baptized again because they were baptized as little infants. An infant doesn't possess the ability to believe in Jesus Christ. So you're right. There's no age in the Bible. It doesn't say you have to be 6 or 7 or 8 or 10 or 15. One thing I know, it doesn't say you have to be baptized before you can get married. There's no, there's no correl correlation. There's no, there's no connection between getting married and getting baptized. Also, the Bible doesn't tell us that children can't be baptized. Now, I will be baptizing children here this morning, but only of age of accountability, only children that understand. And brethren, let me tell you something. We have children in our midst that, we have people in our midst that got saved as children and never backslid, have stood firm for God. Uh, Joseph was one in the Bible, David, Josiah was king, was eight years old. So I'm saying children can have just as much as an adult. Children can have a real experience. But an infant, my dear little Brit, Brit, oh my, that's terrible. I hope they didn't listen in. So Brittany can't be baptized yet. But Lord willing, I will be baptizing some of my grandchildren. But they first have to have an experience with God. So that they can show why they're getting baptized, right? Amen. All right. I think I'm doing fairly good. I'm just saying it. I don't mean it bad. I'm just saying I think you can't get it much simpler than that, right? All right. Okay, go on. 
Next time I won't praise myself, I'll wait you to do that. So sorry about that. Okay. Verse 33. Yes. And he took them the same hour of the night. Oh, here we are. So he's preaching to them during the night. This is all happening tonight. Still with their backs bleeding. Still with their backs bleeding. Brethren, we haven't heard that. We haven't, we haven't been hurt very much yet. We haven't experienced a whole lot yet. No reason for discouragement. With their bleeding backs, and they're preaching, they're saying, yeah. Sir, listen, you don't, you don't have to live like that. You can be saved. Jesus Christ is alive. He's alive. He died for you on the cross of Calvary. Yes. He can forgive your sins. Yes. He's preaching to him. Amen. I told you I have an imagination. I love it. Because it's more than just reading, all right, go on. Yes. And he took them the same hour of the night. All right. And washed their stripes. Oh, brethren, I think that's beautiful. I think that's beautiful. I don't think it was ice cold water. I think he did something, whatever it took, and said, here, let me wash. Brethren, he was the prison keeper. Yes. And he's washing their back as they're preaching to him. And maybe they were preaching to him about Isaiah chapter 53. How Jesus' back was lacerated. How what Jesus did, brethren. Yes. He's preaching. He's preaching to them, and they're washing. They're washing his back. Read. Yes. And was baptized. He and all his. Hold he on. he and all, all his, his. Yes. He and all his straightway. All right. Read. And, and when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced. Believing in God with all his house. So why is this going out of the house and coming into the house during the night going out? And it's just they had to find somewhere yes. was deep enough to be dunked. Yes. They had to find somewhere water. How do we get baptized? And then when he brought him into the house, he sat meat before them. This is all happening during the night. And brethren, I actually long to see more of that, Sister much. I long to see somebody getting saved in our midst and that night off to the lake or yes. whatever we need to do yes. and get them baptized. Amen. Well, has he proven himself? Yes. 3,000 seconds. He did it like the Bible says. He was saved and he was baptized. Sometimes it's good to just get into that water and let everybody know, look, I just got saved. Makes you accountable. Amen. Right? Yes. All right. Yes. Did we finish that? Their brother? I think so, yes. When it was day, the magistrates sent the sergeant saying, let those men go. So Jesus in Matthew 3.16 says, and Jesus when he was baptized, that's another one for your notes, Matthew 3.16, and Jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water. John 3, write that down, you need this one. John 3 verse 23, very interesting verse. It says, John also was by baptizing in Anon near Salem because there was much water there. Good thing everybody could drink. No, that wasn't the point. The point was John said, so where can I baptize? Mount Salem? Uh, what's Orwell? Um, Harrietsville? Where? Ah, I know where we can baptize. Port Bruce! I know where we can... Why would I be interested in baptizing? In, why would, if, if, if people are coming to be baptized, where might be a good place to baptize? Can you tell me? Where? Oh, I didn't do good. Okay, so let me try this again. If I am an Elmer, and a lot of people are coming to me wanting to be baptized, which place, Mount Salem, Harrietsville, Orwell, Port Bruce, which place might be a good place to be to baptize? Say it. Thank you. But, but I don't like Port Bruce. I like it for baptizing. So I'm saying, John picked, where can we baptize? So Jordan is one place, but we have a lot of people coming over here. Please allow your mind to work. What was happening in that time? And John said, I know where we're going to be baptize. We're going to baptize in Anum, near Salem, because there we have lots of water. And so Paul was, he saw people were on a Saturday morning, they were, uh, there was these women, they were, they were uh, uh, teaching the Bible. There was something going on, and there was also water where they could baptize. So is that point made? All right, good. So now, uh, right in your notes, uh, our main scripture that we normally read, and probably will this morning as well, we usually read that right at the, at the baptismal site. Right there we read Romans chapter 6, verse 3. Brother, if you can get Romans chapter 6, verse 3, 
let's read, read there until I stop you. I, I might not take the whole passage. It actually goes down to verse 11 and 12. I think Sister March will read that later on for us, right, right by the, do it now. All right. She, she thinks we should do it right now. So let's go through that, and we will save the time later on. We won't be reading there. So Romans 6, verse 3. Read, brother. Be prepared. I'll stop you. Yeah. Know ye not that so many of you, sorry. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if, we, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. All right, brethren, that's, that's key. That's key in what we're doing this morning. As you're stepping into the water, you're telling them, I am, read that verse that you just read, read that again. Knowing this. Knowing this, you need to know this. That our old man is crucified with him. Uh, my old life is crucified with Jesus. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. That henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Right? Read. Now if, we, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, Reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That's, that's, my, that's my message to those that will be baptized this morning is, yes. let not sin reign. reign. Let not sin reign. Stand against it. Let not sin reign therefore in your, in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Very good. I think that's it, brother. Thank you so much. Or, or was there another verse? Did we? I think that was it. Good. We're nearing the end of our study here. I have a couple of things here to mention yet. Very critical very critical after you are baptized if you go back into sin your baptism has no value your baptism means nothing if you go back into the life of sin where you came from the baptism is like and maybe it's just a weak example but i can't can think of one that describes it better if you made a contract if you made a contract with somebody and you put a stamp on there. If you break the contract, you rip up the contract, you can't save the stamp. Right. You, can't, you can't tear out the stamp and say, I'll put a new contract up. You could go to jail for doing that. So you can't write up a new contract and say, I'll take the old stamp and we'll put some scotch tape. Many people are doing that. Walked away from God, back into sin, still holding on to their original baptism. Obviously, you should never have to be baptized again. I trust that you will till you're 80 years old, however long it takes, I trust that you will always stand. But if you walk away from God, you go back into, this, back into sin. Ezekiel, write it down for your net reference. Ezekiel 18 verse 24 tells us that none of our righteousness will be remembered. If we turn against God and Jesus said, when they asked him, why are you getting baptized? He said, it's an act of righteousness. So when I get baptized, it's an act of righteousness. When I turn away from God, that act of righteousness will no longer be remembered. It was a stamp on that experience, right? Very good. All right, as far as those that, and, and for some of you, this might not make any sense. For those of you that are terrified, thinking that, well, I was once baptized when I was young, or they poured water on me. Am I not blaspheming the Holy Ghost? No, you 
are not because the baptism has to be done the right way for it to be true baptism and if you after you were baptized if you did not live for God and you turned your back on God and went back on God your baptism has no value it's only as good as your life in Christ does that make sense do you understand therefore your reference Acts chapter 19 tells us that people were baptized again all right so uh, one more thing Ephesians chapter 4 tells us it says one God one faith one baptism so then people say see there you have it pastor people can only uh, be baptized once well then let me ask you a question can you only have faith in God one time so what if you turned had one time faith you were saved and you turn away from God can you then no longer come back to God because it says one one God or one faith no it means there is only one and baptism we could say one baptism the right baptism there's only one way to baptize it doesn't mean that a person that was once baptized and backslid and some this morning you will see might have been baptized before but when they turned their back on God and walked away unfortunately well it's just biblical that that baptism does not hold baptism don't put more weight on it than it should and don't put less weight on it that you than you should when you're saved everyone that is saved needs to be baptized but the baptism doesn't save you is that understandable I trust we made it clear this morning if anyone has any questions now we have a little bit of a procedure before us here we will when it's all said and done we'll be eating together but right now what I will be doing is I will be asking those that want to be baptized I will ask that you follow us into the our normal meeting room I would like to meet with you there I guess we could do it here but it's I feel like it's too distractive. I would like to see who that really is. So actually our service continues until we're done baptizing. But uh, as we go inside, I don't mind if you all visit with each other a little bit or whatever. There's no food going to be served. Children, don't run away from here. You can all just kind of intermingle a bit if you want to. And then as soon as you see us coming out, oh, I need to mention something else. When you see us coming out ready for baptism, you'll see us wearing a white robe. That white robe has no um, ceremonial, has no, um, has no bearing whatsoever other than the only reason we put that white robe over is that when you're going in the water with your clothes, your clothes kind of stick and it's more modest to just have a robe wearing a, a robe over it. That's all. But it does look nice and it almost yeah. reminds you of the book of Revelation, those clothes and white yeah. robes. Yeah. So you're it's, right. it's kind of nice, but it, does, it has no... Uh, if, if the white robe saved people, I'd be running in town putting the robes on them. It doesn't work. So, brethren, that's all that is. I, ha, have we covered it here? I think it's good. All right. Every one of you that after this study feels that you meet the conditions to be baptized, please follow us. Brother.